And anybody with us yet? Anybody there? Hello, Robert. Up of the day, Robert, missed you last week. Why is this? Turn on chat. The chat and chat. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, I missed the last meeting. Okay, let me turn up my volume. Say that again, Robert. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting. It happens. Yeah, it's like because I when I was on the meeting, they're the meet link in Google Classroom that you had in the like upper corner. I thought we were doing that. Since I hadn't received an email about the uh, Zoom meeting. So yeah, is this in the reference of like, is this what y'all worked on last week? Well, no, I'm just practicing for, for this week. Um, I don't believe I sent you the all the handouts, have I, Robert? Uh, no, sir. Okay, let me do that right now. Anna's with us. Hi, Anna. Okay. Anna, you with us? Okay. Yeah. I can hear you, Anna. Okay. Anna, did you get the, oh, did I email you all the, Classwork. Yes. Okay. Do you have Do you have AutoCAD, Anna, at home? Yes. Okay. Good. How about you, Robert? Do you have an AutoCAD educational software already? Uh, no, I did not. Um, I did use the email that you sent me for the uh, what was it called? The IntellectiCAD. Right. I did download that. Okay, I'll I'll demonstrate AutoCAD first, and then IntelliCAD. Today they're very very similar. I just noticed the uh, where would I get AutoCAD from? Uh, short answer is you can't. 
you used to be able to pick any school that you, you how to how to put this you used to be able to lie and get it but now they're asking for proof that you're enrolled in one of their listed schools and uh, even i can't get free software anymore until i upload something proving that i'm a, a teacher and i don't know if teacher of the night school is good enough for them um newport news public schooling i doubt the high schools are uh, on the list of eligible schools to select now, recently they added the newport new shipbuilding apprentice school but i don't think we dare try that for fear the apprentice school is going to lose its ability to get student software yeah. you know we're kind of a you know non-credit and certificate and you know, I have to admit, not everybody that gets a certificate really, really completes the class well enough. So I, I kind of doubt we're going to be able to get academic or student use software. So I suppose second question would be, you were saying getting it for free would be through a school. However, if I was to purchase it myself for personal use, how much would that be? Uh, a lot more than you can afford. I'm not, uh, I think you gotta pay per year now. And, um, well, let me see if I could find out real quick. If I can. Not sure if it'll say on the Autodesk websites. I'm tempted to say a thousand bucks a year. Good God! Back when you could buy it and uh, you know pay for it one time only, it was at least two thousand dollars. Let's see. This is Autodesk.com, the company that makes AutoCAD. You can. I think it's easy to get these free 30-day trials. But that, but the thirty day trial will only last you <laughs> days. Yeah, and I don't believe you can download it again and again and again, and possibly if you got multiple emails. But um, getting back in here, products. I I don't know if it's going to give the price on here or not. There we go, sixteen hundred a year. Uh, that's for the uh, standard one. How much would it be for student? Um, well, the student software should be free if you can satisfy them, you know, convince them you're a, a student in one of their listed schools. I'm not sure there's a uh, you can go to edition that you can buy straight out. Say again, Robert. And you're not sure if there's like a student edition you could just buy straight out? Correct. Um, from what news I've gotten, oh, here's AutoCAD Lite. Until we get into 3D work and intermediate, uh, AutoCAD LT will work fine for 420 per year. But um, for some reason, they, they don't sell it outright. You know, they insist on you have to have a subscription to it. And a lot of people complain about that. I don't, I don't know why they insist on. Uh, More money they can make. Probably, yeah. And I don't know if you Google free AutoCAD, the, the, you know, no telling what you'll find. But. Um, there's some risk of uh, you know viruses coming in with it. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd, I'd suggest encourage uh, try. You know, click here on sign in. Second, let me pull back up the window. 
Well, I don't know if we got time here before class to do this. You go to YouTube and look for free educational AutoCAD, and there's lots and lots of videos that walk you through this process. Hard part's finding one that doesn't have too thick of an Indian accent. <laughs> and I, uh, I've kind of exhausted every email I've got. Well, there's, I don't know why, it, okay, here we go. Let me try my pburdner at yahoo.com. Next, did I get that right? Interesting, I never noticed that was misspelled. All right, well, let me try the, the um, Newport News uh, email I got. All the faculty got this nn.k12.va.us. Mm -hmm. Students have, uh, what is it, nnschools.org. I don't know why faculty got the complicated one. Uh, password, I believe, is already by default. And I believe it's going to tell me, hey, you you tried to get free software before, but you didn't send the education, the uh, proof that you're a student. Let's see. I'm looking for free student software. Free trials. Down. Here we go. Click on the three horizontal bars for the for the menu. Daniel. And click uh, where was I? Free student software. Specify I want AutoCAD. And We need additional information. You know, you got to prove you're a student. You got to scan or take a pic of the documentation saying you're enrolled in one of the schools. And again, I, I don't think high schools are on the list. Um, so I just tried creating a sign in for AutoCAD. I said my email already had a sign in, so I'm going with that, and it gave me the option of high school slash secondary school all right. and how far this will take me <clears throat> all right keep me posted but yeah so an area of study be architecture engineering construction or product design and manufacturing i think i've been putting down manufacturing you know making a ships fair point But I get this verify now. Upload a copy of documentation by you and your educational as proof that you attend, teach, or qualified, etc. Uh, when does the uh, class end? Say again, Robert. I'm having trouble with hearing you. Um, what's the end date of the class? Like, what month does it end? Uh, let's see, Elizabeth is with us. Let me go to classwork. And it's in nine weeks. Where's the syllabus? There it is, August 11. It's the last class of the nine.
Okay, let me start an attendance list here. With all this high tech, I'm still taking attendance manually. Oh, come on. Is there a specific school that the class is linked to, or is it just the Department of Newport News Schools? Um, I'm tempted to say just the, depart the uh, Department of Newport News Schools. Because yeah, when I type in Newport News, the uh, educational institution, it says Newport News in York County Governor's Health Science Academy, Newport News Juvenile Detention Home, and that's like just the same thing over again. So. Sally's with us. Um, I don't know, I'm reluctant to tell you to pick one and see it, see what happens. I'll give it a shot. Actually, I wonder if they have my old high school on here. Okay, Ali is with us. We got Anna. Elizabeth. Daniel and Sally. Ali. Let's see. Daniel, Elizabeth, Anna, no, Robert, sorry. Okay, got uh, five or six so far. Class uh, should be starting in two minutes. But um, okay, again, Anna, you do have the student software already. Correct, Anna? Yes. Okay, I won't ask where it came from. And Ali. Okay. Last uh, last week, I heard you you do have software to use at home. Yep. Elizabeth, yes, has software to use at home. Daniel, yes. Did your wife have have luck, Daniel? Sally, you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. I didn't have luck. I tried the. Uh... I tried the student 30-day uh, trial thing, and they continued to ask for credentials, and uh, I didn't have credentials, so I couldn't do it. I tried yeah, it multiple so, times. Yeah, so the first I got with going with my high school was it asked for um, letter of verification, student yep. ID, and transcripts. So... Interesting. I, just, I think they've just started requiring that in the last few months. Frustrating. Yeah. There are some, uh, for a while I taught an, a, you know, a high cost online class and everybody that paid the hundred dollars, whatever for the textbook got the software. And I don't know what it would cost the, shipyard night school to you know do it the same way as that online class does it because the online class i don't think is any more authentic than uh than the the, the shipyard night school you know neither one of them gave college credit and it was you know more or less a you know, an attendance, you know, you, you, you attend all the classes, you get a certificate kind of thing. So, but anyway, uh, was, we, with the night school's got such a tight budget. I have my doubts we'll be able to get a license to, um, uh, you know, issue discs with the educational software on it. But that surprises me. They asked for scanned documentation 
even for the 30 day trial. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I ordered the book as well, and uh, that's not going to be here till July 2nd. It was supposed to be here Monday, and then they, I don't know what happened. They uh, sent a, an email saying it would be July 2nd. What book was okay. that? Robert, did you say something? Or? Yeah, what book was I supposed to get? Oh, the syllabus. Uh, there's a $10 book with the exercises. Let me see if I can open up the uh, classroom again. And I don't know, is anybody getting to the to the classwork and homework listed in the Google Classroom? Um, let's see, enter the AutoCAD classwork. Um, I'm not viewing any classwork in the tab. Okay, two other students had the same thing. They, you know, they'd have Auto, they'd have this AutoCAD, you know, fourteen three three eight nine. But they yeah. would have absolutely nothing when they click on classwork. Yeah, I'm having that issue too. I wonder if uh, what happens if you click on this P in the upper right corner. Upper right corner. The one uh, thing you, know. you, you have to be, use your uh, Newport New School System given email id i am yeah, and um okay if you're using your uh what is it nnschools.org email id yeah and you still can't see the week one two three four all these class work and homeworks then i'm at a loss on uh you know, maybe for some reason they got it rigged so only the faculty the only teachers can see that. I was counting on students to be able to click on uh, each week and click on the uh, you know hand the hand exercises and. Did you try posting them in like the stream area? Um, I've never worked with. I don't know if I can attach. You know, I've. Okay, I've only used this stream area a few times. Um, but I can email you everything you everything that I've already uploaded to the classwork. Uh, if you would please. But getting back to the textbook, eventually, you know, I can only uh, make copies and give them out for so long, you know, before I uh, risk uh, you know, getting legal action against me. Uh, where's there? It is. Here's the textbook. It's. Uh, you can also pick it up at the Apprentice School bookstore. But who wants to go to the Apprentice School if you're, you know, not there for something else already? I mean, I'll try to sing by Wednesday, okay. or um, no, I have class Wednesday. I'll try swinging by Thursday. If it's not inconvenient, I, I've been suggesting people, you know, search for it and order it on Amazon, but uh, it was Anna or somebody said um, it takes two weeks to ship from Amazon. I don't know if, it, if you got Amazon Prime, if it delivers faster than that. But today I've... Uh, also, I, I had to—I forgot to say something earlier due to future reference. So I work second shift, which means my shift starts at six. So I'd have to leave the class at about five. That reminds me, I got to turn on the uh, recorder. If I can remember how to return on the recorder. 
Okay, I think it is recording automatically. Let me double check that. Last week I failed to get anything recorded. Yeah, I think I started it at 252. And I guess when we when I finish recording, it'll have the MP3 file there. So maybe during break, I'll see. I'll, I'll uh, well, then there's a chance of not being able to reestablish the Zoom meeting if I end the meeting. Y'all might have to go through the process of joining the meeting again. Which also, I was under the impression that Zoom meetings could only go up to 40 minutes. No, that's been waived because of the um, pandemic. Okay. In fact, over the weekend, I tested and I was able to record two hours and 34 minutes, you know, of, you know, mostly just background YouTube videos running. But yeah, they, they, that, uh, they relaxed that 40 minute requirement. Okay. But um, anyway, is it safe to say that nobody has been able to get to the classroom yet? I've gotten to the classroom. But however, it's the classwork tab it doesn't have anything under it for me. Okay, anybody else get further than just anybody able to see the week one through week nine? I'm able to see what's uh, in the tab. This is Elizabeth. Okay, say that again, Elizabeth. You've there's, got a... there's stuff in the tab for me. Interesting. For example, uh, week two, um, our classwork page, page 2-1, you know, hopefully y'all could open this tutorial that we're going to do later tonight. Um, time permitting, I, I, I want to assign some of these exercises out of the textbook. Don't know if I dare um, assign all, what is it, six or seven of them here. I want to assign a couple out of the textbook and, uh, you know, email me if if I have not sent you the PDF files for all the, for the homeworks. Okay, again, Elizabeth, you were able to, to get into the week by week assignments? Um, actually, sorry, I was wrong last week when I looked at it, they were there, but when I just pulled it up, it's not. Uh -huh. um. I'm thinking since it says draft under all of them, that may not mean that may mean that they're not posted. So I wonder what those three dots can do for you. Assign, top right. Student search. So, well, how do I change it to try hitting say top something right. other than draft? Get, see where it says assign. Yeah, try that. Yeah, that works. All right. Well, it sounds like I got to do that for each and every. Uh... I can refresh the page. And yeah, see it in the stream. I don't remember. That's probably why we weren't able to see it. My boss, Tom, has sent me some screen captures and I'll. I'll take a hit if I didn't read them well enough. So let me go through quickly here and. Um... Hey, Paul. Yes. This is Sally. I just went into uh, the classroom following Google Classroom, following the paperwork that you gave us, and it doesn't let me in. And I'm wondering if I have to pick. Like it asks you in the beginning, student or teacher, and I pick student. 
And when I select it, it tells me there's nothing assigned. Is that the wrong thing to do? Do we have to pick teacher in order to see it? <laughs> um, Even though we're the student? I would not think so, no. I'm, uh, all right well it sounds like we're gonna i'm gonna have to go another week um without the benefit of um the, the documents in classroom and, and get this figured out and uh looks like there's a difference between posting and assigning Yeah, every time every, for everyone I I change to assign or post, um, they disappear off of my list. And so it may be in your stream now since it's in ours. Um, probably the post it will be for us to read, but the assign it will allow us to upload our project, and you will be able to grade it. Uh, that makes sense. So should I have it? I don't know if I can go back from. Oh dear. It's almost as if once I assign post, I, I can't revert back to assign. Anyway, I'll get it. I'll work on it during the week. And um, you know, I'll assume y'all got got nothing with you right now. So um, you know, we'll we'll have to look at the the procedure on the screen here for class today. You with me? I don't know if I dare try to send out a mass email with all the pages of classwork and pages out of the textbook and pages of the YouTube videos. Well, let's get underway and we'll so, see how it, see what happens. I'll, uh, okay, somebody's calling me. I'll let it go to voicemail. Um, I want to close everything I got open. Um, starting with AutoCAD, this is as if AutoCAD was just opened up for a new session. I'll double click on Start Drawing to start from a, a brand new drawing from scratch. Why does it not? Start up. New drawing. All right, this is a brand new drawing here as well. By clicking on the plus sign instead of clicking on the start. But as as always. I suggest students, students enlarge their command area so they got three lines of text above the white line. Uh, question. You what you got, Robert? Do you want it to be scientific, decimal, engineering, architectural, or fractional? Um, well, I was hoping you'd pick the, uh, the, the top choice rather than go through all those all those uh, questions. Let me catch up with you here. Okay, you're coming up with, uh, I guess the, to, an to, to answer your question, pick decimal. All right. And uh, does it ask for the limits? And One second. Let me see if I want to move the Zoom tab over here. Next. Uh, See, it says angular units, and decimal degrees, 
Fred, Radiance, Radiance. Right, um, you want to use color dependent print style or name style? I tell you what. What happens, Robert, if you if you just click on one of these plus signs? Do you get that wizard, or does it start you in a brand new drawing with all the default settings? Well, this is the first time me opening up drawing with it. Do you have a plus sign? You see no, where I'm pointing? I haven't the drawing portion yet. What happens when you click on the plus sign? Uh, I don't have a plus sign. I don't have a grid even. Yeah, well, Robert, uh, I'm talking with Robert, correct? Yes. Okay, I thought you had no software at all. No, I got the uh, IntelliCAD. The, uh, IntelliCAD? Yeah, the IntelliCAD. Okay, hold off. Um, I got IntelliCAD up and running. If I can... Oh, nuts. Everything I got minimizes out of the bottom of my screen here. Damn it. All right, let me open up CMS and Telecad. Click register later. It's, it keeps asking you for activation key and you know, it keeps bugging you, tickling your conscience that you're, hey, you're using this for free. When are you going to pay for it? So just keep clicking uh, register later or, or OK. Disable macros because I don't know what they do. No. Okay, there we go. My uh, Zoom stuff is covering up my taskbar. Okay, can you see my screen, Robert? Yep. I suggest simply click this use a template drawing instead of create an entirely new drawing. Get back to that. The, uh, create an entirely new drawing in IntelliCAD runs you through all those questions asking you stuff that you haven't learned about yet. Uh, so use a template, click next. A start from scratch template in IntelliCAD is simply CAD.DWT. In um, AutoCAD, it's called ACAD.DWT. Very, very similar. I'll click Finish. But anyway, give me a minute here for the four students with AutoCAD, and then I'll then I'll demonstrate IntelliCAD. All right. Thank you. Okay. So in AutoCAD and IntelliCAD, both, I, I highly recommend three black command lines ahead of the white area here where you type in lengths and dimensions and angles. So this command area is kind of like the back and forth communication that you have with AutoCAD. Now, as we covered last week, I want us all to have all status bar buttons shown. Now this, by default, um, IntelliCAD is already the way I want it. So in a minute, I'll get, you know, do the, go through the same routine with IntelliCAD for the few of you that are using IntelliCAD instead of uh, Shipyard uh, AutoCAD. But to, to get all these buttons to, to display, Click over here on the customization or the three horizontal bars. 
and I want you to have a check mark on every single button. Even though we're only going to use a couple of them, I want them all visible. So that way, at a glance, you you can tell if if one of these, you know, if the button is visible, you can tell if it's on or off. And if it's on when you think it's off, that that may make all the difference the way your AutoCAD behaves. So I want them all visible so we can start with all of them turned off. Again, it's simpler with IntelliCAD because you know it uh, ships out of the box with everything on that is that, that's needed to be everything visible that needs to be visible. So click anywhere in space to lose that. Last week I had us all turn off every status bar button so that they're all gray and white. None of them have got the, the blue coloring to them. Okay, and we learned how to, uh, after, after some time, we learned how to set the uh, polar tracking, but a little crash course review because we got some new students here. First thing we learned is the line command in AutoCAD. And again, I'll, I'll show this in IntelliCAD in a minute. Click line, zigzag all over the place. And with everything turned off, you got no guidance. You got no T-square, you got no uh, pegboard snap grid matrix or nothing. Hit enter or space bar when you're finished drawing a line and it, gets, it returns you back to type a command down here in the white area. Okay, if it doesn't say type a command in the white area, hit escape, you know, twice for good measure. Every time, you know, don't click on an icon until you see it say type a command. If you see these grips coming up, that's another reason. This early in your training, I want you to hit escape twice to get rid of, to, to uh, unselect the entities or objects. So if you see green, I'm sorry, if you see blue grips or the command area down here says anything other than type a command, hit escape twice. So double check and it says type a command, I'll click line. After a few lines, uh, vertices with AutoCAD, you can right click and invoke two of these options to the line command undo and close. Undo steps you back a segment, kind of like you're stepping back in time. Right click again, or you can click down here on the uh, highlighted option down here on the command prompt, close and undo down here, or you can type C enter or U enter to invoke close or undo. Again, I, I suggest right click and pick undo to step back in time if you made a mistake. When you're ready to terminate your line, you can hit enter and it'll end right where you last are or were. But if you want to send it to terminate where it began, that would be a good use for the close option of the line command. Okay, last week we also covered how do we erase single objects. You know, again, double check, you got no blue grips on, on anything. Double check, you, it's saying type a command. If you got blue grips or there says anything besides type a command, hit escape twice. Last week we covered single object erasing. The erase icon is in the upper right corner of the modify panel of the home tab of the ribbon. Again, line is on the draw panel of the home, ta home, rib home tab. Erase is on the modify panel of the home tab. So double checking, it says type of command. I got nothing, no blue grips for things uh, selected too early. We'll click on the erase icon. AutoCAD comes back telling you, hey, select the objects. Okay, and you'll see this prompt for uh, uh, 
I'm tempted to say every one of these modify commands, move, rotate, trim, fillet, copy, mirror, scale, uh, array, all of them sooner or later will tell you to select objects. This early in your training, just click them individually with a pick box. Right now I've got four items selected. You can see there's the selected ones are slightly grayed out. If I click on the same one multiple times, it says, hey, you just selected a duplicate, and the total number in your selection set remains the same. Again, you can click more. Now I got five in. Once you've got selected what you want the modify command to operate on, hit enter. Again, the modify command we're using right now is erase. Well, there's no other steps to the erase command, so it returns you back to uh, type a command after erasing things. There's no base point and two point and specify an angle and you know, specify a type of array or, you know, there's no other questions to the erase command, so it quickly puts you back to type a command. Let me click the undo icon up here on the, uh, what's this called, quick select menu. And everything I did during that last pick, 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 enter series gets undone. The undo icon on the quick, on the quick select menu is a little bit different than the undo option of the line command. Again, the undo option of the line command sets you back just back in time, just one line segment. And I'll close to make a polygon. The undo icon up here undoes your entire zigzaggy line. You know, every every single vertex is undone. Okay. Again, click click the erase icon, click one or two and hit enter. And you can recover them again for practice by clicking the undo icon up here in the upper left corner. After that, we play, we, I, I learned you the polar tracking button on the status bar. Well, not only polar tracking has got an on or off to it, see it turns blue when it's on, gray and white when it's off. But like nearly all of these buttons, there's a setting behind the on or off, just like you can have your car radio on or off, but there's all sorts of settings to it, volume and you know, station. And, or another example would be your headlights. So they can be on high beams or low beams. Well, now everything's automatic, but that's... Anyway, we want to set polar tracking so that Every time you're making a diagonal line, it'll snap into a 45 degree angle. You know, 45, 90, 135, 180, it'll snap in one of the um, um, 45 degree increments. So right click on the, on the polar tracking button. There's a shortcut that says it's already set to 45, but for good measure and to be more like IntelliCAD, I want you to click on the tracking settings at the bottom of the cursor menu. Again, right click on the button that you've got on and you want to set. Click tracking settings. And this is where I want you to see 45 degrees. I think that additional angle is from playing with uh, during the week or something. So we we want we want the a, a um, kind of a T square to automatically pop up when you're close to to a 45 degree angle in your line. And no additional angles at this time. Click OK. Double check its polar tracking is still on now. Now draw some lines and check it out. If, if you're within a few degrees of being perfectly horizontal, that automatic T-square will snap you perfectly horizontal. 
So you can easily draw horizontal and vertical lines just by uh, being close to the uh, perfect horizontal um, or vertical direction. But check it out, you can also go in 45 degree angles. So you can go horizontal, vertical, and any 45 degree angle with polar tracking set for 45 degrees. And you might say, well, what if you want a line of a specific distance? Well, click the line icon, pick a random point to begin. Uh, rest your cursor so it's in one of those polar tracking directions, right, left, up, down, or any of the 45 degrees, and simply type a distance that you want to go in that direction. I'm going to type 5 and hit Enter. Wiggle the mouse a bit. And you can see that I've just drawn a five unit line up the 45 degree polar tracking line. Rest it horizontal, type say three, enter. And I just drew a three unit line horizontal. Two units straight up, I don't know, seven units to the left. Seven units in the, uh, what is this, 225 degree angle, yep. So with this, you can, you can design your floor plan just by walking around the perimeter of the house. And um, you'll make the individual rooms by just pointing in the direction you want to go and typing the number of units you want to go. Now the question comes up, well, what is a unit? I'm going to hit enter to terminate the, the line command. No need to close it. Well, an AutoCAD unit is whatever you want it to be. But once you decide what you want it to be, you got to be consistent. Um, machine part drawing uh, our drafters will likely have, assume an AutoCAD unit represents an inch. Architects like to work with inches also. However, a civil engineer building a parking lot or a bridge or something, they, they like to work with an AutoCAD unit representing a foot. Metric countries like to use AutoCAD representing a millimeter. So depending on where you are and what, you, what your profession is, you'll you'll decide what an AutoCAD unit represents. And once you decide, you need to stick with it. Now, later on, we'll, there is a way you can, you can embed within the drawing what you've assumed an AutoCAD unit represents. But that's uh, much further down your training than uh, we might get into, into that in the very, very end. I can't remember if we cover blocks in this nine-week class or not. Everybody with me so far? Take advantage of this direct distance capability by taking advantage of the polar tracking and typing the direction you want to go in, or the typing the distance you want to go in that direction. Now check it out, you can still pick random points. If you just break, a, break away from those polar tracking green dotted lines, there's a polar tracking green dotted line. If you break a few degrees away from it, you're free to uh, go in any direction. Notice that the direct distance continues. If I, if I point my cursor in a random direction, I can send it a, a specific number of units in that direction just by hitting a number and hitting enter. I got it in a random direction here. I'll hit five enter. So it went five units in that random direction. Okay. I think that's as far as we got last week. Anybody remember uh, any more than, that we covered? Oh, zoom and pan. If, if you want to zoom in to see a close up of your drawing, simply roll the, the, uh, the mouse wheel. 
roll the mouse wheel toward the screen and it's like you're in a helicopter and you're going lower and lower closer to the ground so you're seeing less and less area of your drawing you're getting a close-up of your drawing conversely if you pull the wheel toward you it's like the helicopter goes up into the air and you're seeing more and more square footage or acreage so roll toward the screen to get a close-up pull the wheel toward you to, to to see more real estate more square footage another nice thing about the wheel on your mouse simply push the wheel straight down and it's kind of like you you um, took a long pole in your helicopter stuck it on the ground and kind of pushed your helicopter to to the right or left nothing moves it's just that your perspective of of the drawing appears different you know and again when you zoom in and out nothing changes sizes it's just that your perspective changes so you can zoom in to do a fine detail or zoom out to to do a uh, you know great big you know drawing of the whole city if you want another nice thing about the IntelliMouse wheel, double click the IntelliMouse wheel and it'll instantly pop you to see all there is to see. That's called zoom extents. So you can zoom in, out, pan right and left and double click if you want to see all there is to see quickly. Let me show that with IntelliCAD now. I'll minimize AutoCAD. Here's IntelliCAD. Now IntelliCAD has the status bar buttons yellow instead of blue. You know, yes, last week we started by turning all of them off. There is no uh, menu bar. You know, the three horizontal lines like you have in AutoCAD. I believe if you right click in the gray area, it comes up. Everything is already visible in IntelliCAD except for all these current With line gray items. Areas. Question? Hey, right hey. click on your mouse in the gray area to the left of your status bar. And that'll. Which one's the status bar? The status bar is is all of these icons in the lower right of your screen you know right down here below the command area I'm trying to move zoom around in telecad I, I can't hear you robert say that again i said i was trying to move zoom around in telecad all right you with us now or yeah, I'm trying to get IntelliCAD moved it back over to. Um, all right, and now they're both in the same. I could see both of them now. So. Okay. But uh, IntelliCAD acts much like oh. Um. Uh, in order to have the uh, the options of commands display. Um. There's a couple of steps I didn't show this last week. I think I was invoking the commands in IntelliCAD by typing the first letter of the option, C for close and U for undo. But during the week I learned it is possible you can get a cursor menu and click the options with your mouse. And to do that, go to Tools, Tab, to Options, in the manage panel and select on the display tab check display prompt boxes and it's not exactly the way AutoCAD is but it's close 
So with, uh, again, tools to options to display, check this display prompt boxes. And then let's go back to the home tab. Click online again and check it out. You got this nice little, uh, what's it called, option menu? I forgot already. But the, here's the, here are the options of the command, close and undo. I'll click undo and it undoes much like AutoCAD. And just undo, it goes back a vertex at a time. I can go forward by clicking more and cl click close if I want the line to terminate where I began. Okay. IntelliCAD also has this polar tracking button. Looks the same, kind of like a clock. Turn it on so it turns a shade of yellow, but we need to know what, what it's set for. So just like with AutoCAD, right click on the polar tracking button. Yeah, I can find it. Here you have polar tracking. All right. Okay, right click on the on the polar tracking button, pick settings, and uh, very similar interface to what we saw in AutoCAD. We want this early in your training, I want you to set it for 45 degrees. Most textbooks have you set it to 90, but I think you'll, you'll quickly find an advantage to setting it to 45 degrees, and have those extra polar tracking green lines appear. Okay, once you've got polar tracking on and set, just like with AutoCAD, you get the polar tracking green dotted lines plus the 45 degree lines. And whatever, wherever your cursor is, whether it's snapped into one of the polar tracking lines or at some random angle, simply type the, uh, type the distance you want to go. I'll say three and hit enter. And there, that, that line, line segment I just drew is three units at whatever random angle that was. I'm taking advantage of the polar tracking, I'll rest my cursor and type, say, three enter. And there's another three unit line. Three enter, there's another three unit line. You just walk your way around the floor plan or the machine part. You can also undo again and close when you're finally done if you want to terminate where you began. So how do you do the three unit line? Well, much like AutoCAD, look for the command prompt to say enter. Much like an AutoCAD, if you see any of these blue grips where the command prompt says something other than enter, hit escape twice. And AutoCAD prompt says command. It used to be AutoCAD used to be like that. So when you see command and no blue grips, click on the icon that you want to invoke. Draw your random lines or Winds perfectly down a polar tracking line. If you accidentally click click the wrong point, you don't have to, you know, hit enter and, and start over again. Simply undo and be more careful the next time. I'll say two units to the right. Five units straight up. Five units to the right. Here I'll go five units in a random direction. Again, you can undo back in time and finally close when you're done.
The zooming and panning is the same in IntelliCAD. Double click to see all, you, all the extents of your drawing. Roll it toward to get a close up. Pull it away to get a distant view. Push the IntelliMouse wheel straight down to push your helicopter to the right or left to, to see more area you know, to the up, down, right, or left of, of what you're looking at. Okay, Robert, are you the only one using IntelliCAD? I'm using it as well. Who, who's speaking, please? Um, Aaron. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. I got to add you here. Aaron, uh, you do not have the student AutoCAD, but you do, they are using IntelliCAD, as is a new student Robert. Anybody else using AutoCAD? I think the rest of you, uh, okay, I've gotten a little bit behind here. Okay, Samantha, I haven't made note of you joining our class yet. Your microphone's turned off, Samantha. Hey. Thank you. You're talking when oh. I joined, sorry. <laughs> Not a problem. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> I appreciate. Double checking here. I think I've got everybody accounted for. Robert, Anna, both newcomers. Samantha, Aaron, Daniel, Sally and Ali. Oh, and Elizabeth. Anybody I miss? Samantha, let's um okay, you've you've got AutoCAD up and running. Yes, it's on my work computer. Okay, so I got uh one that got, looks like I got five that, that have the AutoCAD up and running and two that do not, so they're using IntelliCAD instead. Ready to cover material for week number two? Yep. Okay, let's turn back into AutoCAD. There we go, we were in this drawing. Let me nudge it up a hair so I can see the uh, status bar at the bottom. You got only polar tracking on and remember right click pick tracking and that's set for 45. And pretty uh, later tonight we're going to learn this object snap button. But, uh, let's learn a few circle commands before we get into object snaps. Okay. The three ways of drawing a circle is, is the first two, center radius and center diameter. And near the bottom is tangent, tangent radius. I want you to practice those three today. Okay, center diameter is probably the most common in shipbuilding because drills are indexed by diameter, but let's do them one at a time. So click on this little triangle below the circle icon and it invokes a flyout that includes options. Not only the circle command, but circle commands options are, are built into these flyout icons. It makes a difference. Uh, well, because of that, I want you to go back to the icon, not just hit enter to invoke the last command. The icon invokes the command with, with the proper option. We're hitting enter simply invokes the last command, which is simply circle. You got to manually invoke the option. That, anyway, click on circle uh, center radius method. AutoCAD asks you specify the center point for the circle with some options available. Disregard the options since we we're using the uh, circle icon, pick a random point. Next AutoCAD says specify the radius. 
for first time, just pick a, a random distance by clicking with your mouse. Repeat the process again, click center radius. You can pick it off on the, you know, once you use an icon, it becomes the, you know, the one on the uh, panel. Pick a point and you can type what you want for the radius. Say uh, one, enter. And that's a one unit radius circle right there. Circle, pick a random point. We also covered uh, absolute coordinates. That's in part of today's classwork, so I won't demonstrate it again. But pick a point, either pick with your mouse or type with your keyboard a radius you want. Circle center diameter is the same, but instead of answering the question, what radius do you want, it, it'll ask you what diameter do you want. So pick center diameter, pick a random point. See how as you pull your mouse away, the length of the rubber band on your mouse is the diameter of the circle. Click it again, pick a point. Pick a random distance for diameter. Just like um, center radius, you can also type a distance, say four, enter. Type a distance, say one, enter. Everybody with me so far? Okay, the third way is uh, comes up in academics a lot. I think gasket makers do this. Maybe if you round a corner, um, you know, there, later today we'll learn a fillet method of rounding corners. Check it out. Select the tangent tangent radius method. AutoCAD first asks, well, what do you want? Specify an object that you want the circle to just barely touch. Say I want to put a balloon in this corner here. Well, I'll, I'll say, hey, Mr. AutoCAD, I want, I want the circle to barely touch approximately here on this object. AutoCAD comes back with specify the point on the object for the second tangent. Well, Mr. AutoCAD, I want it to approximately touch right here. Now AutoCAD comes back with specify the radius of the circle. Notice that it's in, it suggests that you want, you're, you're gonna pick two. It's taking a guess maybe because that's the, the last diameter I specified. If you agree with what's in the brackets here, just hit enter and it's like nodding your head saying, yes, you are correct. Use what you suggest. Or you can override that, pick a different number, say three, enter. And there it just barely touches those two lines and fits in the corner. And again, again, click circuit circle tangent tangent radius. Pick two points that you want the circle to just barely touch. Now the default is three because that's the last number I use. I'm going to change it to one and hit enter. Okay, later today we'll learn how you can disintegrate pieces of the line and pieces of the circle that you don't want to remain. So you'll end up with like a piping elbow or a uh, rounded off corner of a plate. Everybody with me in AutoCAD circle making? Now be on the lookout if, if you got lines super tight together. There's a limit to how big the circle can be and still fit. So and I can't remember. Um, I believe you get an error message now. Let's see. 
click, click, and I'll say three enter. And not a clue why it set it there. I'll say one enter. Okay, AutoCAD is places it as if the um, the lines could extend until the till there is enough space between the lines to put the circle. Maybe it put it there because uh, it would have to be so far off the screen. Okay. Let's go to IntelliCAD now for the two students driving with IntelliCAD. Same thing, to draw circles, drop the fly out down, pick circle center radius, pick a point and click, pick icon again, point and click, icon again, point, and instead of random click, say I wanna specify, say uh, one, enter or say two enter. Back to a random distance. Next way, circle center diameter. Same with AutoCAD, same as AutoCAD. Click the icon, pick a point, specify a diameter with the rubber band on the cursor, or specify the diameter by typing it in. I'll say, uh, four enter, and it should be the same size as the two unit radius we just drew. Okay, circle tangent tangent radius is, is in uh, IntelliCAD, just like AutoCAD. Specify it, specify the two objects that you want the circle to be tangent to, and specify the radius, and it'll put a bubble that just barely touches the two points that you wanted to be tangent. Say you wanted to put a big circle right here between these two lines. Click circle radius tangent tangent. Specify the approximately where you expect the circle to, to touch. Specify a radius and it'll inflate a balloon that just barely touches in the vicinity of those objects where you click the objects. So far, so good. One second, let me see if I can get tangent on here. You said, how do you tangent it? How do you do the circle tangent tangent radius again? Oh, yes, sir. All right, let's draw a nice V shape. Hit enter to finish. If it's not already on the panel, drop down and specify circle tangent or circle radius tangent tangents. That's why I got an S at the end of tangent. Save space. So circle tangent tangent radius, slightly different order of the words. See circle radius tangents and tangent tangent. Mm. All right. Okay, circle radius dash tangents. Select the two objects that you just barely want to touch with the upcoming circle. All right. Last thing AutoCAD asks you to do is specify the radius of the circle you want to just barely touch like a balloon in this uh, you know, V-shaped, I don't know, ditch cross-section, say, I'll say, uh, oh, 1.5, enter. And much like with AutoCAD, later today we'll learn how to disintegrate or erase the parts of the circle and parts of the line that we don't want to remain in the drawing. Thank you. Okay. What time we got? Want to take a break? Uh, hearing no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay.
Let's uh, reconvene. I got 416. What do you say we reconvene at uh, 425? Yeah. Nine minute right. break. That's fine. Okay. We'll do. Go get another beer or hit the head, whatever. <laughs> Those of you that want to stick around, uh, anything I need to cover again? I'm good. So, um, how does turning in homework work? Like, not like that, but like, do you like just take a screen capture of what you made or? No, I'd, I'd prefer you save your work on your hard disk and then attach it to an email to my uh, nn.k12.va.us, my uh, Newport News School System email address. All righty. And hopefully within a few weeks, I'll figure out, you know, how students can upload to the, directly to the classroom. But as we saw a minute ago, I'm, I got a lot of catching up to do and learning, you know, how to assign and how to. If I go to the, the it says class week two classwork and homework at slash create, it allows me to link files and put a link to files and stuff like that. So it allowed me to upload files from my computer. Directly into the Google Classroom? Yeah, so from my perspective, looking at the classwork and homework, to the right of it, it says your work, add or create. So I'll click that, then it'll allow me to upload something from either my Google Drive directly from my computer or directly from my computer. Yeah, I have used uh, Google Classroom before for another classroom. And I have seen that when the teacher puts the assign work is more like for us to upload the homework and they will be able to give us a grade on it and I, I think that's the difference between posting and assigning work because the ones that you assign and post I'm able to see them I'm able to see them the week three the list of YouTube tutorials syllabus week two and week one and all the final projects which were the ones you assigned earlier. Okay, what's, uh, I'm, I'm hearing that I need to change all these, you know, the week two, week three, all the classwork and homework folders or assignments and, and have change them all from draft to assign, correct? Yes. Anna? Yes. And um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to send a screenshot because now I'm the class, the week one classroom ho and homework, I'm able to see the files and on top it says to add my homework and it says that I will be, if you grade me, it will be from zero to 100 points. I'm not sure if I'm able to like send a picture of screenshot well okay well I guess I'll uh, you know be before uh, midnight Saturday night you know I'll check both the classroom as well as my uh, school system email account mm -hmm. and some of you will do it via the class classroom class work assignment and others will email it I'd prefer to have your uh, DWG AutoCAD file, not, not a screen capture or a JPEG uh, pic of your, of your work. You know, eventually, uh, you know, I want to be able to, I want, I want to examine your AutoCAD or your um, IntelliCAD file to, to ensure that you got the colors and line types and you know things that are in the background controlling mm -hmm. you know layers now how can i uh how can i change a uh, object from post back to a sign i'll figure i'll work on that during the week because a few of them i 
you know, I started changing them all to assign instead of draft, and then I started changing them from assign to post, and it doesn't, I can't see a way to revert back to assign. So I'll, I'll figure that out during the week. I see that some of them where it says, like, what says like classwork and homework, it says that's assigned, but however, stuff like the syllabus and the YouTube tutorials, if that's a post, that's posted instead. So like in terms of like the homework stuff, I'm not seeing anything that would be posted. Yeah, the other ones were assigned, which allow us to upload a file and be graded. I saved quickly what we were doing with the circles and the lines. I save it as a .dwg and I was yeah. able to select the file and try to add it to one of the assignments for week one. So I think it will be probably easier for you if we upload our homework directly through Google Classroom. And it will still be the file for AutoCAD or the other software. Okay, I'll. And I think you're ahead of me on on this Google Classroom yeah. stuff. So let's. Um, you know, I, I still want our students to have the choice mm -hmm. of either uploading to Google Classroom as uh, you know as the Google Classroom is set up to do, but um, you know we still got some students that aren't well up to speed with Google Classroom, and I'm not up to speed. So the uh, d emailing it directly to me would be uh, the secondary method. Okay, what time we got here? Okay, 4.23, might still be students out on break. Yeah, I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay. Okay, I see uh, made sent a couple of messages. I'll, I'd rather not open them up while I'm sharing the screen. Oh, what the hell? Oh dear. Uh, what is this meeting password? Let me go to an old message, see if I can find the password. I know I screen captured it and sent it to my substitute. Uh, for some reason, this outlook doesn't quite behave the way uh, outlook does at my uh, office at the uh, Air Force Base. <coughs> so 
Zoom password. Well, let me just forward this. Yeah, I've already forgotten who, who was asking me. Ahmed, okay. Back to drafts. Ahmed, uh, okay, he's he hasn't tuned in yet. Not sure why, and, and I'm not sure if Did I miss something? Ah, damn it. What happened? I think I, I think I lost the message I was working on. All right, I'm not sure if Ahmed can join us or not. Okay, Ahmed was not with us last week. So. All right, where were we? Um, it was the IntelliCAD conscience tickler. I don't know how often it comes up. Just click OK to get rid of it. All right, uh, next on my list is object snaps. By the way, those of you that are newcomers, um, everything we cover in class is, uh, I've got a YouTube video on it. And, you know, this, this YouTube tutorial is uh, very, very similar to what I just did for circles in the demonstration in class. So, um, 
you know, go to these uh, tiny URL, you know, copy paste this out of the uh, classwork file and uh, watch the YouTube video to, to get a refresher, to get a, um, a rerun of what we learn in class. And it might be a good idea to, to look at next week's handout and you know, check out those YouTube videos that, that we'll be covering next week. All of them begin with HTTPS colon slash, uh, yeah, slash slash tinyurl.com. So, you know, save all that HTTP.com, all that stuff at the beginning on a notepad. And uh, you can quickly just type in the Bergner 2A or 2E, to, you know, the, I think I ran out of, you know, anyway. Uh, check out the, here we go, this, this one is uh, Bergner 2E after the HTTPT, et cetera, dot com. Ran out of space for the entire URL, so just type the uh, far right end. Anyway, let's cover object snaps now. Okay, we don't have object snaps turned on. Let me uh, bring resurrect AutoCAD. Now, hypothetically, say we want to draw a line from the center of this circle to the center of, say, this circle. Well, AutoCAD got these little homing devices called object snaps that'll, uh, you know, zoom in, you know, kind of target, you know, send the line directly to the center or the quadrant, top, right, left, bottom, uh, intersection, uh, uh, midpoint. You know, there's, there's uh, I don't know how many, maybe a dozen different types of these object snaps. Um, the way I want you to learn first is by typing three letters of the name of the object snap. And we'll see a list of the, the names of the object snap in a minute, but check this out. Launch, you know, double check. I got nothing, no blue grips. It says type a command, so click line icon. I want to start my line at the center of the circle. So type. C E N enter and AutoCAD realizes hey, you want to turn on the snap to center object snap homing device. And see how when you know it's sometimes you gotta wiggle your mouse over the circumference of the circle for AutoCAD to recognize you know which which circle center you want to go to. You know, if you got a dozen circles overlapping, it's, you know, you, anyway. Uh, as soon as you see the homing device icon for snap to center, it's a green circle. Just click. Now I'm back to, you know, flying without instruments. Those object snaps will only work for a single point. If I want to go to this center, I need to use the object to snap to center object snap again. So type C E N enter. Slide your cursor on the circumference, and boop, there's your center to center. Say I want to go from the end of this line to the midpoint of this line. Endpoint to midpoint. We'll start line, type END. I want to home in on the endpoint. As soon as you see the endpoint icon, a green square, go ahead. No matter how far you zoom in, that is perfectly at the end of that line. Even if it's just a random point in space, it's, uh, I'm starting the line precisely at that endpoint. Now, check it out. I, I'm flying without instruments again. I got, you know, no homing devices turned on, no snap to center, no snap to endpoint. I want to go to this midpoint, so I'll type MID enter for midpoint enter. And check it out. The snap to midpoint icon is a green triangle. Circles ain't got no midpoint, but uh, every line has a midpoint. I believe arcs have a midpoint. 
you know, once we um, learn how to bust a circle into a into an arc. So objects that I'm, my cursor flies over, it'll home in on the midpoint. As soon as you see that green triangle indicating, hey, midpoint is targeted, left click. And there's completed from endpoint to midpoint. You understand the concept? Let's make it a little bit easier though, so because you, you know I realize students hate typing. Say I want to go center of this to center of that. Launch line, hold the shift button down and right click. And there I can turn on the snap to center homing device without having to type anything. Okay, that invokes the snap to center, oh snap, for just one point. I come over here, hey, it's not coming up. Well, that's because the oh snaps only work for one point. Hold the shift button, right click, invoke the snap to center homing device again. And now we got it, we can home in on the second circle's center. Say I want to go to this end point, hold this a shift button down, right click and pick. I want to home in on the end point. Click on end point. Now, whichever end point I'm closest to, you know, every line has two end points, so I got to be closer to the end point that I want to home in on. I think I chose this guy. So when I see the green square, click. Maybe go to the midpoint, shift right click, pick midpoint. Now I'm back to finding midpoints of lines or arcs. So far, so good. These are called O snap overrides, just a single use object snap for each, and I got to invoke it for each and every point. Okay, now what if we rig AutoCAD to always home in on center if, if a center is within targeting distance or an endpoint if an endpoint is within targeting distance? Okay, we can rig that every time AutoCAD says select point, two or more object snaps get excited and home in on a center if my cursor's near. Home in on an endpoint if the cursor's near an endpoint. Home in on a midpoint if, okay. That's where this status bar button object snap comes in. And once we set running object snaps in the settings of the object snap button, we'll no longer have to type CEN enter or shift right click and pick it off the menu you know depending on which item is is nearest a center point an end point or a midpoint it'll home in on that it'll target and home in on so let's turn on object snap so it's in autocad it turns blue like i showed uh, like we set the setting of polar tracking let's set the object snaps that we want to be running object snaps behind or in the object snap button. So right click on the object snap button. Here they're shown, it's a nice little short cut, but let's do it the official way like we did for uh, polar tracking. Pick object snap setting. And I recommend these five always, always be checked. Let me clear all. And let's show you. Let's just pick endpoint and center point for now. Just those two. Click OK. Now, when we start a line, if we're near an endpoint, the green square pops up. If we're near a center point, the green circle pops up. And bear in mind that some of these points are both center of a circle and endpoint of a line. You know, so 
So anytime I'm close to a center point, it'll home in, or if I'm close to an end point, it'll home in. So I can go from end point to end point to center point. Whoops, I slipped off the green circle. What do I do? Right click and invoke the undo option of the line command and be more careful. Center point, center point, end point, end point, end point, end point, center point, center point, end point. Hit enter when done. Everybody with me that wants to be? Yes. Okay, now let's set Bergner's five favorite. You'll hear me say that a lot. In fact, the student used to tease me about it. I highly recommend you always, always, always have endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, which is top, bottom, right, left of a circle, and intersection, where two objects or a polar tracking line and an object intersect. And, and Telecad's not quite as capable as I recall, but I want these five always, always running. You can always turn off the, ob the, the object snap just by tapping on the button. And you can always override these five by typing the first three letters of, of the uh, oh, near point is one, uh, perpendicular is another one that you might use on rare occasion with a no stamp override. So with these five running, and I think I got them in your handouts written, endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, and intersection. Have those checked, click OK. Double check that your O snap button is still on because you can set O snaps but accidentally have the button off. Now check it out. I'll go to line. If I'm near a midpoint, it'll home in on a midpoint. If I'm near a intersection, it'll home in. There's the green X for intersection. Okay, there's an intersection of one of my 45 degree polar tracking lines and an existing line. When I found that, I thought that was really neat. AutoCAD would uh, understand the intersection of a polar tracking line in addition uh, where it intersects a piece of ink. There's another intersection between a polar tracking line and that uh, circumference of the circle. Near an endpoint, the diamond is the quadrant of a circle. So I can go from quadrant to quadrant to quadrant. There's a midpoint, there's a midpoint. There's a midpoint, the green triangle. In time, you'll You'll anticipate and recognize these uh, object snap icons. Quadrant, quadrant, straight up the intersection, intersection of, ex of two, two pieces of ink. Again, with a green X, doesn't, doesn't always show up well. Midpoint. Intersection of two lines, intersection of polar tracking and a piece of ink. Hit enter when you're done. So again, uh, I highly recommend right click, pick object snap setting, those five to be running 99% of the time. Now notice there's also nearest, tangent, perpendicular, insertion uh, will, that involves uh, repetitive symbols called blocks. May or I don't think we get into that this, this quarter, but say I wanna go to the nearest particle of ink. Okay, not necessarily the end or the midpoint or an intersection, but the nearest 
particle of an ink. Let's bail out of here, launch a line, and check it out. I'll shift right click and pick nearest. Remember the OSNAP override we began with? Now check it out. Wherever my cursor is closest on this circle is where the line will begin. The nearest OSNAP is with a green hourglass. And I'll do, use it on a line also. While I got nearest OSNAP invoked by an OSNAP overrun, no other object snap is, is operational. It won't snap to center, it won't snap to mid, midpoint or intersection. It'll only home in on the nearest piece of ink. No matter how far we zoom in, that line, well, okay, this uh, regen purifies that. I'll stop RE enter or regenerate. That's another thing I covered last week. When you can't quite, when you when you zoom in on something and it and it turns into into a stop sign or an octagon, that means the uh, display memory. See how it's got flat sides around the the. Uh, I'm I'm asking for the circle to display a little bit faster than the uh, display memory can handle. So simply type RE or REGEN to regenerate and that'll purify the display. Okay, you can, you can use the view uh, regen less often if you type view res, V-I-E-W-R-E-S, enter. Yes, I want fast zooms. I suggest the view res be set to the maximum possible. 20,000. And that'll assign maximum amount of memory to generate the display. And you'll find you need to regen to purify the display less often. Anyway, we're back down to, uh, to the five Bergner's five favorite running object snaps. quadrants, midpoints, endpoints, intersections. What if we want to go, what if we want to draw a line straight down to it so it hits this line at 90 degrees? We don't want to go to the midpoint. We don't want to go to the intersection. Now that point is not quite 90 degrees. You know, approximately right here is 90 degrees. That would be a good use for the OSNAP override for perpendicular targeting. Type PER, enter, or hold the shift button and right click and pick perpendicular. And for this one point only, it'll home in on uh, the perpendicular of the object your cursor is resting on, even a circle. It will strike the circle at 90 degrees. Okay, so rest my cursor on the line, and when I see that little carpenter square icon, click, and that's perfect 90 degrees on either side of the line. What if I want to go to tangent, like a like string is being wrapped around this circle? That would be a tangent point, approximately there. I'm back to Bergner's five favorite now, midpoint intersection. So to go to tangent, hold the shift button and right click, pick tangent, and I'll admit, IntelliCAD's a bit behind on, on this object snap. I'll show you in a second. There's the snap to tangent icon, a line just barely touching the top of a circle. So when you see that icon, click, and it's as if that string were wrapped right, right around this spool. 
What if I want to make a fan belt go between these two pulleys? Tangent to tangent. You know, I'm going to have to use the tangent O snap four times. It might be worth resetting, you know, clearing all and only having tangent run rather than shift right click for all four of those points. Okay, this is an unusual, you clear all and, and pick one O snap. Double check O snaps on, click line. There's my uh, line over a circle. Click in the vicinity of where you think the tangent is gonna be, because all bets are off if you, you know, click over here. If we're designing, you know, sketching a fan belt, click there and AutoCAD perfectly placed it tangent to tangent as if the fan belt were going right off of one pulley onto another. Same thing at the bottom. Again, uh, IntelliCAD's a little behind the times on uh, tangent object snaps. And here's the uh, YouTube video, Birdner's 2A. I, I should have emailed to you all by now an Excel spreadsheet of all my YouTube tutorials. They're, they're on that Excel spreadsheet. It's in the assignment for week one, and I believe I tried to email it to everybody. We've had a few come in uh, that missed the first class, and I may have forgotten you, so send me an email if, if you're missing anything. Okay, before we forget, let's set our object running object snaps back to Bergner's five favorite. End mid center quadrant and intersection. So far so good. Good. O snap overrides by typing three letters or shift right click only 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 apply to a single point running object snaps go point to point to point to point and the running object snap that gets excited depends on where your cursor is on your drawing hovering over a circle close to a midpoint of a line close to the end point of a line close to the quadrant of a circle so again, you'll in time you'll recognize all those green object snap circle um, icons. Okay, I got a newcomer. That's I'm not Daniel. I'm not sure what you mean by that's quite the Andrew Pollock you have there. Okay, Daniel pointed out the, uh, I think this is a password to help you get into the classroom, W7JUMFC. I have not had to use that yet, but I think that's kind of a back door way to get in. I missed a lot of chat going on here. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, I'll give you a break after playing with IntelliCAD here. In IntelliCAD, the uh, object snap is called Entity Snap. Um, and somebody once told me if you want to copy something, you got to change 5% of it. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen that official, but, you know, so IntelliCAD changed some words and rearranged things, I think, just to satisfy 5% difference. Anyway, we want to turn on in IntelliCAD's Entity snap, you know, nearly identical to AutoCAD object snap. We want to right click and click settings and turn on the exact same five that we did with AutoCAD. I've already got them set here. They're in a you know, very similar dialog box, but they're in a different order. Where's it at? The snaps? 
Okay, right click on the entity snap button. See enable running snaps. That would be turning it on, yes. Yeah. But the, to, to specify the five running object snaps, I recommend go to settings and select them off of the here. I'll clear all. And the same five I showed in AutoCAD, endpoint, center, I forget, you know, they're again, they're in a different order, but endpoint, center, midpoint, intersection, and quadrant. In a couple places in upcoming handouts, I'll give you a little reminder of this. Make sure these five are running. Which ones? Add up what form? Endpoint, center, intersection, right. midpoint, and quadrant. And depending on which which of the two CAD systems you got, they're in a different place on the, um, what do you call this, pick box menu, matrix. Sorry, I'm running a bit slow. I'm trying to like find things. I have to like zoom into the Zoom call, like go over to like the Zoom call, like, enlarge it then go back over to the other one because I'm on the laptop right now. So it's hard for me to see like both things at the same time. Uh, I understand. Let me know if I'm going too fast. I've gotten that comment on the end of class reviews several times. Yeah. So with those Five running, click OK, double check entity snap in IntelliCAD is still on. And now you can, you know, if you're close to a center, it'll home in. If it's close to a quadrant, it'll home in. If it's close to an endpoint, a midpoint, an intersection. Now, double, oh, good. IntelliCAD also homes in on the intersection between a polar tracking line and a piece of ink. So it'll home in on you know, where two pieces of ink intersect or where a polar tracking line and a piece of ink intersect. It'll home in on midpoint. I believe the shapes are the same as AutoCAD. By default, they're, they're uh, red instead of green. Okay, this bottom point is both the quadrant and an intersection point. So it kind of depends which way the wind blows, which one AutoCAD turns on. Midpoint, intersection, so you want to go to, now this is where IntelliCAD's a bit behind. I think it'll work for a single tangent point, but the pulley system tangent to tangent is a little bit, IntelliCAD's, you know, like 10 years behind AutoCAD on. I'm going to hold the shift or the uh, shift key and right click and say, hey, Mr. IntelliCAD, I want you to go to the tangent of the circle. Okay, so click on tangent O snap, or I believe type T-A-N enter is, is another way. And you can bring up an, a toolbar of icons. Now, wherever, whichever circle um, resting on, you get that same line, line above a circle icon. So I'll click there and it's like a piece of string went from that wherever I was to wrap around the circle. Now unfortunately the tangent to tangent isn't quite so can quite so powerful. Let me, let me do an O-snap override for both ends of, of the top and an O-snap override for each end or both ends at the bottom. You know, last time I cleared all the 
snaps and set only tangent, but I'll do all do it the hard way here. Line shift right click tangent. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for class, but I gotta give us in the second shift. So y'all have a nice day. Say again. But um it's been fun, but however I have to go because I have second shift. So I'll just watch the rest. Oh, later. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. I believe my my uh, recording is working. So send me an email and I'll. From the looks of it, I'll, it is. I'll uh, I'll put. I think I'm going to put it in the uh, Google Drive. Not in the assignments, but on the drive. So uh, anyway, email me, uh, Robert, and I'll get you the the recording. All right. Thank you. Everyone else have a nice day. You too. See you next week. See you. So let's click on uh, where we see that tangent point, but check it out. It really doesn't go tangent like AutoCAD does. Instead, it started where, where I happened to click, almost like the near O-snap. But let's continue. I'll hold the shift button, right click, and pick tangent again. This one is perfectly tangent to the second circle, but notice the tangent point did not correct itself on the first circle. But there's a workaround. I'll, I'll go right back to the first circle. Shift, right click, pick tangent. Oh, snap on the circle, and by golly, now that line is in fact tangent to tangent like a fan belt. Let's just erase that first one we did with the delete command in IntelliCAD. IntelliCAD calls it delete, not erase. Again, just enough to keep from getting sued. And I'll, I'll use the delete command the same way as AutoCAD's erase. Likewise, shift right click tangent, click shift right click tangent, and the third point shift right click tangent, and hit enter to, all right Bergner, how do we get out of this? There. Those, the, and we'll go back and erase or delete the first line that was done poorly. All right, what happened? Okay, I, I clicked the wrong red X. That one has to do with layers, which we'll learn in a week or two. I'll click on the delete icon on the modify panel, just like the erase icon on the modify panel in AutoCAD. I'll select that first line and hit enter. So it took an extra extra line and an erase to, to do in IntelliCAD what, what AutoCAD does much easier. All right, this is, I'm keeping you, you need to take another break. I got you another 40 minutes. Let's keep going. Next thing on the list is the trim command. Again, let's start with AutoCAD. Now bring up AutoCAD. Go back to drawing 11 where we are. And the trim command disintegrates pieces of objects that cross over others. Like if I wanted to erase this part of the circle, I trim it from where it crosses this line to where it touches the same line at this end. Okay, if I want to erase this part, 
I'd need these two lines to be cutting edges to disintegrate this piece of the circle that crosses between those two points. Okay. The trim command is at the top of the um, uh, modify menu. I was playing with the sister command extend. It does the exact opposite. It lengthens lines until it touches ink instead of trims back until it um, you know, disintegrates. So click on the trim icon. Now this is not very intuitive. Unfortunately, it started this way in 82 and it's kind of late to change it now for the old dogs and the programmers, but check it out. You click on trim and you hit escape. Back to command, type of command, I'll click trim. Check it out, AutoCAD says, select cutting edges. It's a little more intuitive if it, if it said, hey, select what you want to disintegrate. But AutoCAD asks, select the cutting edges. Well, I can click, click, click all the cutting edges, you know, two or one or, most often, I think you'll find that a, a, agreeing with the default of select all is, is beneficial. So rather than selecting click, 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 cutting edges, just hit enter to accept the suggested select all. Now everything's a cutting edge, and wherever you click, you disintegrate it. And you'll notice I tried to click there. Well, there's how to put this. If if an object does not cross anything, then you need to erase it, not trim it. So be on the lookout. You know, plan your um, trimming so that you don't end up with one with an object that's orphaned like right now this is orphaned it doesn't cross anything so i can't trim it i need to use the erase command recently autocad added an erase option to the trim command i won't play with it because then i'll have to i think i'll have to revert back to trimming again but you know so i suggest go back later and trim those orphaned objects you can undo if you accidentally trimmed uh, uh, one too many go back to trimming again hit enter when you're finished now look Dan cell line, okay. Dan, I guess you're you're listening on your cell phone. That's good. Now I'll go back and erase those odd things that uh, must have slid off. I'll erase those odd things that are orphaned. Things that Again, you can't trim an object that doesn't cross anything. Either go back later and erase or invoke the erase option of the trim command. Let's go to IntelliCAD. Whoops, bring up IntelliCAD here. IntelliCAD has got a slightly different icon for the trim command. I believe you'll find it runs the same way. Double check it says command and double check you got no blue grips. If you got blue grips or it says select other corner or anything but command, hit escape twice. Click trim icon. IntelliCAD 
is a little more user friendly. Hit enter to select all. Okay, I'll hit enter to select all. And now wherever I click will be blown away, provided it crosses other objects. That I cannot trim because it doesn't cross. That I cannot trim. I can trim this guy though. Uh, just machine gun all over the place, shaving off whiskers. Okay, I'm going to orphan one or the other. I got to go back later and erase that guy. Okay, this must. Yeah, that one doesn't cross, so I got to go back and erase it. Much like AutoCAD, I can undo. Done on the uh, cursor menu in IntelliCAD is the same as hitting enter on your keyboard. Returns you to command prompt, waiting for the next command. Okay, Aaron, I think you're running AutoCAD. Still with us? Might have stepped out. That's okay. Let's uh, go to the fillet command now. That's the last thing before we do classwork, and I'll assign you maybe two of the homework, not all six or seven of them. The fillet command puts an arc instead of a point where lines touch. Okay, say I want to put an elbow between these two pipes. That would be a good use. For Excuse me, Paul, oh, Stan. Dan, I think we're getting a little feedback. Thank you. AutoCAD's fillet command is slightly below the trim command. It's on a fly out with chamfer. I don't know why this blend is there, but fillet and chamfer are kind of sort of similar. Click on the fillet command. It tells you what, what the fillet radius is set for. Excuse me, Paul. Yes. I'm having difficulty seeing the screen. Can you make that bigger? It looks like we're only seeing a small portion of, of your screen. You know what I mean? Um, the AutoCAD section, can you bump that up? Okay, I'm surprised. I thought I had it set to show my entire screen. I can see homework assignments in the background and, and your desktop. Okay, is can you see my AutoCAD now? I can see AutoCAD, but it's not it's not as big as it should be. I can maximize it if maximize the other button, the one at the top. Yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, I think I clicked the X instead of the. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> I got. Uh, okay, I minimized the. Um, Zoom toolbar that's blocking it. Okay, there, I maximized AutoCAD. There we go. Oh, thank you so much. That's so oh, much better. <laughs> Thanks for telling me about that. Sorry, uh, feedback. That was for my cell phone. <laughs> okay. All right. I think the uh, we broke free, lost the process. Not a problem. Let's so we got type a command, nothing selected. Click fill it. What happened? Okay, AutoCAD by default, it's, it assumes you want to make a zero radius, you know, a sharp corner instead of an arc. Most often, you'll you want to change the radius to to a number. So in AutoCAD, right click, pick radius, and set the radius to something reasonable. I'm guessing two will show up well. 
So I just set the radius setting to two. I'll continue on and pick two points or two lines. And there that truncated and created this arc. Now be on the lookout if that's a little too blunt. I want it only to be a one unit radius. I'm going to end up with a leftover arc. You know, this arc is not welded to the lines. An arc is an arc. So check it out. Fill it, set the radius to one, enter, and pick the same two lines. That original arc, you know, AutoCAD's not smart enough to, to know that I want that to, to be erased. Not a problem. Just go ahead and erase it. You can also put an arc, uh, a fillet between an arc and a line. I'll leave it set for one. I can put an arc between a circle and an arc, um, or a, a, put a fillet between a, a circle and an arc. Kind of surprised it truncated part of the circle, but that's okay. Uh, let's see, put a fillet, uh, an arc between this circle and this line. Notice it truncated the line. So there's a setting. You can set the trim to yes or no if you want it to, to truncate or not. Say I'll put a fillet between these two lines. One will extend and one will truncate, I believe. Now, what if I set the fillet radius to something very, very high? It'll put like a drooping fan belt between the two. Unfortunately, with the fillet command, I can't fillet a convex arc. IntelliCAD's ahead of AutoCAD in this, this uh, process. Check it out. I'll click fillet. I'll set the radius to say, I don't know, eight, enter. Pick these two circles and it'll put it concave like a drooping fan belt. I can't for the life of me get the fillet to be convex. And I want it to go outward. And that's the weakness I have with AutoCAD and AutoCAD, uh, fill it in AutoCAD, is that you cannot make a convex arc between two circles. Oh, what if you hit the shift key, Stan? Um, not sure I follow. As you're making the fillet, select the shift key and it should push the radius to the opposite side. Oh? Let me erase, I got a couple there, so I'll click it a few times. All right, fill it, hold the shift key. I think you gotta pick them first, but go ahead. Oh, okay, click, uh, I think it'll maybe shift, as soon as I click the second, it's gonna make the arc. I'm back to type a command. Let me undo. Let me hold shift before selecting the second one. I don't know, I get a circle slash saying, hey, that does not compute. Okay. I'm, I'm at a loss on that. Uh, the other CAD systems allow that, though? I'm not aware. I was making some circles in there um, not too long ago, but it wasn't, I guess, in the in the tangent tangent mode, and um, it would flop the the radius to the other side. It was in AutoCAD, and I was in mechanical, so maybe I don't know if that made a difference. I don't know. Um, I know little or nothing about mechanical, so. Something to study.
But the, the workaround, if we can't find a way to force a convex fillet arc, the workaround is you already know tangent, tangent, radius, circle, and trim it back. So I'll click tangent, tangent, circle. I'll say I want the circle to touch there. And the, you know, again, it's wise to touch where you anticipate the upcoming object will be. Asking me for specify uh, radius, I think eight will work. Go back to trim, enter so everything's a cutting edge, and erase the remnant of the circle. Now let me show you. Uh, looks like I'm going to keep you over time. Let me uh, reduce AutoCAD. IntelliCAD is uh, a little more friendly with the fillet command. I'll, like AutoCAD, it starts with the radius being zero. I'll pick the radius option off this cursor list or type R enter. I'll change the radius setting to say eight enter. And I'll pick two points and check it out. It's smart enough to Based on the points I pick, it'll know whether to put the arc convex or concave. I'll pick the same circles but close together, and there it put the arc concave. So I kind of like IntelliCAD for that capability. You can place a fillet. Oops, always something. I'll have to punt. I'm not sure what's going on there. Fill it. Click and click. So depending on whether you pick the circles close together or pick the circles at far points, the IntelliCAD will do the fill it convex or concave for you. For good measure, click fill it, pick two, uh, an arc in a circle, and kind of extended, that's okay. Click fill it, no, say two lines, whoops, I think I slipped off of one. Why did it, okay, apparently uh, the radius setting is too large. I'll specify a smaller radius, say that length. And again, you can set it so the trim is off. Phone's ringing again, might be my parole officer, but that's okay. Any question about the fillet command in AutoCAD or in IntelliCAD? All right, the, the tutorial, we're gonna run out of time. I guess I misjudged how much uh, adding IntelliCAD to the program is. But the handout here walks you through, you know, start at this absolute coordinate down here. How do I zoom in? Yeah, I guess I can't. But it wants you to start at the absolute coordinate, one comma two, with polar tracking set for 90 degrees or 45, go up, you know, just follow the perimeter all the way around. When you get here, invoke the close option to terminate it back where it began. But continue, turn on O snaps and set at least to endpoint. Bergner's five favorite will still work, but with, with at least endpoint running, draw these guidelines to the circle centers. From here, put literally put a line on top of a line, one and a half and down one. From this endpoint up and each way 75 or uh, 0.75. So eventually you got endpoints at which to make the circles with, I think they're all done with circle center diameter. 
Next step, you add three circles using the tangent tangent radius option method. Next step three, you go crazy with the five favorite O snaps. And tangent to tangent's the tricky one, remember. Tangent does not cooperate with quadrant. That's why I don't suggest it be a running O snap. After drawing all those O snap lines, trim it away and you get this little I don't know, piece of soundproofing or gasket or whatever this thing is. Oh, and you fill it with sharp corners using the radius of three eighths for some and a radius of one for others. How about we do six and ten in the textbook and email them in to me or Upload them to the classroom. Sound reasonable? Let's see what six, six, eight, and ten are. Hey, it's Sam here. You said six and 10 at first, and then you just said six, eight, and 10. So which one did you uh, want? Six and 10, I don't know why I said eight. Unusual Freudian slip. I got a folder someplace called solids where I think I've been saving. Well, let's go to the classroom. Open up the Explorer classroom. Class, and I, I don't think I've changed this to a sign yet. But uh, here's a page with uh, six and ten on them. For those of you that have not yet gotten the, the hand, the textbook, you know, email me, I'll send it to email if you don't download it. Um, as I recall, this number six has got a typo that uh, makes it confusing. Um, let me see, go back to classwork. Can I get the class number one now? I think in, I've, by, by setting uh, classwork, oh, no, there it is. Okay, I thought it disintegrated forever. Um, I should have emailed everybody, and again, I apologize with those that came in late. Uh, week number one has got this spreadsheet of errors in the textbook. And which one was that? Why do I not have anything for uh, problem number six? I thought that did have an error. Anyway, uh, be on the lookout. If I assign one that's on this list, you know, check the little warning I've got. For example, in number 15, if you draw the eight vertical dimension, then everything else will be off by a, a hair. So leave that, what the book dimensions is eight straight up. Leave that for last and just draw it end to end. And I think they carelessly dimensioned. You know, here's a 34 is a case where a, a dimension was missing. Anyway, 5:30. Anybody got any questions or what I say again? Six and ten. And I'll show you those again. Okay, you got, a, got some fillet work here. Oh, don't bother with the uh, red lines and don't worry about the dimensions. We'll, we'll cover that in future weeks. I apologize if some arithmetic's done that is required. So just these first two, six and ten, I want to receive by midnight Saturday night. 
Call it a class. Okay, class, I'm gonna start shutting down. Thank you. My pleasure, email or call me at that uh, 7172 number. I'm kind of kind of on sick leave and kind of telecommuting, so I can't promise I'll pick up the phone right away. Feel free to call me or send me an email. I prefer the, uh, what was it, nn.k12 address, but uh, feel free to email to the p underscore Bergner at Yahoo in addition. I'll close the class and I hope the recording came out. See Thank you, you next. Bob. My pleasure. See you next week.